So this subject is probably one of the most exciting subjects and is also debated, right? Like wildly debated. A lot of people disagree with it. A lot of people think it's like seriously their in most important part when it comes to essential oils and their entire world. Um, but what I want to kind of, I guess, help you understand is that frequency and the very idea of it became a really big part of how we teach oils, right? And it's something that Gary talked a lot about and something that Young Living has talked a lot about and a lot of people in different oils communities have talked about. Um, one of the things I want to help you understand before we dive into this subject, because I'm going to kind of change your mind a little bit on things, hopefully. I mean, it, and this is straight from Young Living, okay? So I am teaching stuff straight from Young Living, is that um, I have been taught by Gary at his feet. And what I mean by that is I have learned from him since 2007 with the different tapes that I was given and different lectures that I was able to um, hear also being at all the different events over the last four years while he was still alive. Um, and I have a strange photographic memory when it comes to specific information that I'm really interested in. And so he talked a lot about this, but not in a way that made a lot of sense to many of us, right? And what I mean by that is there was no duplication on it, right? So he had this brilliance about him that made like things he understood them. I don't know how to explain this, but he was able to to understand plant molecules in a way that I don't know that anybody else can could, right? It was really almost creepy his relationships with plants. And um I loved that about him because he just had this this sort of magic touch when it came to like understanding plants, right? Like actually I, I, and again, it's kind of a weird thing to say, but like understanding them, right? Like, like almost like they spoke to him. So, so I, you know, it breaks my heart sometimes because I do know some people say that Jen O'Sullivan teaches anti-Gary um, methods, which is not true at all. So if you've ever followed me at any length of time, I cover old school Gary methods. So I talk about things that are very specific to his original teachings, which a lot of people in Young Living have never heard before, simply because they haven't been around long enough. So some of the um, men and women who've been in Young Living for a really long time appreciate my teachings because they're like, yeah, that's like original, like essential oil Gary Young teaching. And so the people who claim I teach anti-Gary is because they've never heard of it before. And so they think like, ah, oh, like that's not true. And it's like, no, it's true if you actually dig in. And I like digging in. That's one of the things I love about Young Living and the amount of content that we provide. And one of the other things is that I allow anyone in this group. I allow any person who wants to learn in my Human Body and Essential Oils group, I post this out to the world because Gary's mission was to get essential oils, to get Young Living specifically into every single home. I only use Young Living. I don't teach on other brands. Why would I? That doesn't make any sense. Our oils have a specific molecular structure that allows frequency in our bodies to be generated that is unlike any essential oil brand I've ever tried. And you guys know I've tested a bunch. And so I want to help you understand this so that you can explain it better without all of these weird scientific discrepancies, <laughs> okay? So, um, and this is one of those areas of science that Gary started down the trail, but stopped because it wasn't really connecting in a way that we could duplicate. So if we think about it this way, science was sort of right. Um, and what's so exciting is because now understanding it, we understand it in a way that makes more sense and is duplicatable. So I'm going to ask you a quick question. Haven't many of you guys been frustrated um, that there's this really short list of essential oils on the frequency list and their frequencies and nothing ever gets added to it? There's never been anything added to it. And it for me, I've always just been like, why? That makes no sense. Like, can't we just add to it? Like, let's get the frequency readings. Okay, so let me burst your bubble just a little bit, but then I'm gonna blow it back up bigger. Is that okay? W would you be okay with me doing that? Okay, so frequency as we understand it, as we teach it today, 
wait for it, went out of vogue in the 1970s. This is straight from Dr. Michael Book, okay? So I'm gonna give you some really cool information that you're gonna start seeing Young Living teach on. Yeah, like I love this stuff. So I was able to be in a really amazing small group conversation with him about this. And um, it's, it's amazing. So if you think about this, the reason is because scientists, right, they could not replicate the frequencies. So they found that as they were studying the molecular frequencies of various organic substances and compounds, it was totally dependent on, you ready for this? Temperature. So if you took like, say, rose oil, and we all know rose has the highest frequency, and we're going to get into Idaho blue spruce in just a minute. But rose is considered by many of us to have the highest frequency at 320 megahertz. However, if you take rose oil straight from the freezer, which some of you freeze your rose oil and you know it gets stiff because it's wax, the frequency is way low. And then when you heat it up, like if you hold it and warm it up so you can drip it out, all of a sudden the frequency is actually higher than 320. So depending on the temperature of that oil, the frequency totally changed. So there was no ability to duplicate that. And so it explains why some random member took a frequency reading of Idaho Blue Spruce when it first came out and went crazy ballistic over the fact that they got a reading of 580 megahertz, right? So there's all this kind of discussion going around, but nobody's ever been able to duplicate that because it was just warmer, much warmer, when they did that reading. So you could kind of create any frequency reading on any oil or any organic substance and kind of make it what you want it to be based on the temperature. So scientists sort of threw this out as sort of like, this is not exactly right. Okay. But here's where I think it gets very interesting. So understanding now that measuring the frequency of the actual oil is not something that um, you can replicate with any precise accuracy, what I want to dive into is what the science department at Young Living is working on. And it's headed by Dr. Michael Book, our chief science officer. So this is where this stuff gets wildly exciting. Okay, so phytomolecules, if you don't know what that means, it's phyto means plant. So it's the molecules of plants have the exact same structure. So the structure, the shape, and the charge of phytomolecules, plant molecules, have the same ability, the same structure, charge, shape, to fit into our human receptors. This is really interesting to me because, guys, this is not random. It is precise and accurate. And it's absolutely incredible, okay? So again, let's, let's go over that fact again. Phytomolecules, right? Plant molecules have the exact same structure, charge, and shape to fit into our human receptors. Okay, so you might be like, well, what does that mean? And you may have heard about receptors before. A lot of people with the CBD, it's coming out and everybody's talking about like receptors, right? and receptor chemistry. Well, just to give you a little bit of basics, the basics of receptor chemistry is that there are specific chemical messengers that bind to a specific receptor that causes a specific response, okay? So basically, to understand this a little more, is that not all messengers fit into all receptors. It's sort of like a lock and key situation. Okay, so a good example of this would be your senses. So, for instance, if you have an aromatic messenger near you, like let's say I open up my bottle of Melissa, there's an aromatic messenger that just binded to one of my receptors in my sense of smell, in my nose. Specific. My sense of sight did not pick up the Melissa. Does that make sense? I have sight receptors that are picking up the light and everything else that, and the specific. My sense of smell is not picking up the sight messengers, okay? So that hopefully will give you a little bit of an understanding of, of receptors, is that there are very specific messenger signals that bind to specific receptors in your body that then signal specific responses, all right? So if I was blind, that means my receptors and my eyes aren't working properly, if at all. And so sometimes you get like, 
funky messages and, and mixed signals or no signals, okay? So this is where we start to understand receptors and messengers and how they fit, all right? And so that, um, if you think about certain essential oil molecules, within a, a, an essential oil, there are multiple molecules, right? Sometimes hundreds of molecules in one essential oil. And when you start to understand that some of those molecules will bind to, say, your sense of smell, right? Others, like in, the, in peppermint, you'll smell peppermint. Those are specific aroma molecules that will bind to your sense of smell. But it also has the ability to bind to your sense of touch receptors and you'll feel a cooling sensation. And even on a third level, some of those molecules are action molecules that will fit into specific areas in your body, specific receptors in your body that will trigger specific responses, right? So some of you guys might, again, we can go back to peppermint. Some of you guys might feel energized when you, when you um, smell or put on or consume peppermint. Some of you might feel um, more clarity, right? There's these different actions. This, the, and again, therapeutic action is one of the words that we sort of have termed, but I like to just call it this, this action, right? This authentic action in an essential oil. And so it's really cool to start to understand what's going on here. So I want to give you a quote from Dr. Michael Book uh, to help you understand it. And this, you're going to want to get your pen and pencil out or whatever and your pad of paper because you're going to want to write this down because you're going to want to mull this over. <laughs> All right. What he said is that we are now, as scientists, we are more impressed about the frequency generated in the nervous system by your nerves after these molecules bind to specific receptors that were designed to receive them. Does that make sense to you guys? Is is not not concerned with the actual frequency of the oil. More concerned with what happens when I take this oil and put some on my body and then see what happens, right? And then have the action or what he says, what happens in my nervous system, right? What's going on in my body that's causing these to the activity to happen, right? That's what's more interesting. He went on to say, it creates a frequency in your nervous system, which is actually an electrical impulse. And this is where it gets really cool. It is a precise frequency the same every time. So I'm going to challenge you. Let's stop being so concerned about specific frequencies of oils and let's be more concerned with how specific oils respond in your body. So this is why it's not a one size fits all because some of you guys maybe would never want to use Melissa. I gave a drop of Melissa to a girlfriend of mine a couple weeks ago and she about cried. I'm not even kidding you. I, I, it was it was the most amazing thing to watch. It is my favorite oil. <laughs> like I love this and I covet it and I kind of don't really give it away to m many people. But she saw me bring it out and she was like, oh. And I go, do you want to try some? And she's like, oh. <laughs> you know? So I gave her a drop and I, sh I showed her how to use it. I literally took my warm hand and again, that raises the frequency of the oil and I put it over her wrist. I put a drop on her wrist and I put it over her wrist and like tears were coming to her eyes. She wasn't even really smelling it. She was feeling it. And that's what is so chill inducing, right? I get the chills when I think about that. And that's what we want to remember is that it's about what it does inside our bodies that is more important. And, and here's, here's what he said about this is when you think about this is that you want to understand the clinical frequency, not the molecular frequency. So the molecular frequency would be the frequency in the oil that's not duplicatable, that's dependent on temperature, whereas the clinical frequency is what it's doing in your body. Okay, what's actually happening? And it's multifaceted. It is not just the aroma smell receptors in your limbic system. It is not just the sense of touch or, or you know, the, the feeling you get or the sense of emotion. It's everything combined, okay? So, 
What he was talking about is that it's more important for us, Young Living, for all of us to study clinical frequency rather than molecular frequency. Um, he wants to understand the frequency that is generated in your body by the mo molecules of the oil, right? So that's where we want to say, how are these frequencies being generated in our bodies? What's happening there? So when we talk about frequency, what I'd love for you to start doing is start talking about how once it's applied, it mixes with our own body chemistry. The actual essential oils bind to very specific receptors in our bodies, creating a specific response, right? that is incredible. And that's why we have to study action so much. It's why I have my oils categorized into colors because specific actions are more important to me than a specific essential oil and its, and its actual like frequency. So does this make sense to you guys? Is this exciting to you guys? Is this like mind boggling and mind blowing to you? Because it is for me. Absolutely. This makes so much more sense to me. This adds another piece to the puzzle. And I bet you anything, this is not the end of it. This is just the beginning of understanding more about these oils. It's just so incredible. So that's it for frequency. If you have questions, please um, feel free to question in the comments. If you're listening to the podcast, I don't know how to respond to you, but you can always email me at jen at jenosullivan.com. If you are ready to get started with Young Living, I would love to welcome you into the Young Living family. My distributor number to get you the best discount is 946-916. I love walking people through. I'm working with a couple people right now, walking them through um, a couple people reactivating, which is always fun to get reactivations because it's sort of like, okay, let's start again. Okay, friend. So if that's something that you'd like to do, please email me. Um, and then we will get, get started on getting you hooked up with these amazing essential oils. All right, you guys take care and we will see you soon. Bye.